Okay, just as the title said, today we are going to be learning how to track a scene um, pretty basically in PF track and then bringing that tracking data into Blender so we can use it. So I'm just going to be using a pretty normal stop clip here of some people walking and um, by the end of this tutorial you're going to have this into Blender ready to put in some 3D assets. Um, so let's get started with the tutorial. So starting here in Blender, we're just going to want to take our clip and separate it into the frames. Let's go up here into the video editing tab and make sure that your um, little playhead is on frame zero and press shift A and add in the movie clip. So I'm going to want to grab that one and make sure that um, all of these are checked. That'll just make sure that your scene is pretty much set up to um, take the video clip and match the frame rate and all that stuff. So let's add in the movie strip and you'll notice that um, immediately the clip is way longer than the Blender project. So we're just going to want to go over here to the end of it and find what frame this ends at. So the last frame here looks to be um, 1728. So we're just going to want to set the end here to 720, 1728. Okay, that looks good. And now we can set, make sure that our output is set to the right output folder. So you just want to go over here and select our output folder and render, render animation. And let's wait for that to finish. Okay, and now that that is done, we can go over here and see that all of our frames were successfully rendered. So now we can go into PF Track and start the tracking process. Okay, so now we are over here in the PF Track window. And we're going to want to go ahead and create a new project. So you can see down here there's this Create button. We're going to go ahead and click on that. And over here in the name, let's just name this Tutorial. Um, and you're going to want to go ahead here and paste in the right directory. So I'm actually going to want to put this in a subdirectory called pftrack just to house all of its um, cache files and all of the program files. So let's go ahead and select that folder. And internal disk caching is fine. And let's set this frame rate to something like 30. I think that's a lot better. Um, for your clip, you're going to want to set this to the frame rate of your clip, but we should have figured that out already um, back in Blender. So now that we have all of those settings confirmed, we can click on this confirm button and we are opened up into this new window. So the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to open up the frame directory. So down here, um, this is very important. It confused me a lot when I first started using pftrack, but um, you're going to want to click here and make sure that you are in the root directory. So now that we have that there, um, go back and find the folder which our frames are in and click up here and we're going to want to copy that. So now that we have that copied, um, click on these three dots over here in the bottom right corner and that's going to allow us to paste in that directory. And you can see now, um, make sure you switch so then this says G over here and that will basically make it so then it will recognize our frames. So now that we have that detected, we can go ahead and drag that all the way into the left window and that will import the video. Um, try just pressing the space bar just to make sure that everything looks okay. Um, it may take a minute just to cache the video into memory the first time that you play it, so just wait for this to play out. And you can see here, as it is playing, um, the area over here in the green, that's the stuff that is cached to memory. So we're just going to want to cache this entire video to memory so we don't have any stuttering later on. Great, so now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to come up here to the um, video clip and we can right click on this and we can click on tracking. So we're going to go ahead and start with a auto track. That will bring up this window and now we can start our tracking. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to detect the different features. So um, we can go over here and we can click on all the different settings we want. Um, this is the preferred number of trackers. This is the um, it's just a bunch of different settings. You really shouldn't need to tweak these um, that much unless you're really a little bit more advanced with the kind of stuff, um, but the defaults should be fine for now. So once that's done, um, we're just going to want to go over here and click on the auto track button. And now we just wait for this to detect the trackers and track those through our scene. Okay, so I'm getting a little bit in here um, and I'm noticing some problems already. So if you can see here, um, we're starting to get trackers on the dogs and on the people. And that's not really what we want because that's not really representative of our entire scene. So I'm going to go ahead and press escape, the escape key to cancel that track. And I'm just going to actually delete this entire tracking node. 
Um, you can do that by pressing delete twice, once to delete it and once to confirm. So I'm going to actually want to go back in here into auto track again, and this time I'm going to start from scratch. So let's reconnect that, and I'm going to go over here into this mask tab. So what this will allow us to do is it will allow us to create a basic rotoscope um, around subjects in our scene and to track that. So then um, basically setting this as a garbage map. So it's saying while it's tracking, don't look at this area for points. So I'm going to go ahead and create one of these around all of my subjects and then track it. So you can see how I created that around the person. And now if I move a little bit forward, I can press control here to grab it and just move that a little bit along. Um, continue moving in our scene. You can see over here, clipped his head a little bit. And every single time I move it, um, it should automatically create a keyframe, moving this garbage mask, so then it won't look at these areas. Okay, now I just want to create a second one here. I'm going to click on Vizier Roto, and I can start rotoscoping out the dog. Okay, and that looks pretty good. Um, you can see if I play this through here, um, these masks should cover pretty much all the moving objects in the scene. And this is just so then when it's looking at the scene as a whole, it's only able to look at um, the grass, because that's really what we want to track, because that is the scene that um, we're moving through. So now that that is done, um, it really isn't an exact science. It's just kind of covering these things up so then the... Um, so then the tracking won't look at it. So now that we're done with that, we can go back in, double click on this auto track, and we can continue with our tracking process. There we go. Um, and auto track. And this process will take actually quite a long time because it needs to go all the way through the clip and then it um, sometimes goes all the way back on it just to make sure that it tracked all these trackers properly. So I would just say, um, step away from com your computer a little bit um, and come back probably good 10 minutes and we'll see what it did. Okay, and just like that, the entire thing was tracked through. So you can see here, um, we have a bunch of points that appear on the ground and the main thing we want is just pretty good parallax. So you can see back here, we have some trackers. We also have trackers up here. Um, and we have sufficient movement throughout the scene. So it's um, that's a, that looks like a pretty good track. So we're gonna wanna go over here and create a new node um, called the solving node, and this is where we're going to want to click on camera solver. Um, so you can see we're already getting like a weird plane here, um, but because it's connected through the auto track into the camera solver, we can actually take those different points that we've tracked throughout the scene and create a virtual camera. So um, now that we have that connected, we're just going to want to click on the solve all button. Okay, that should take nowhere near as long as the um, tracking step, but you can see now we have what looks to be an OK solve. So it seems to be tracking our camera, it's just that the scene is not oriented properly. So, um, as you may have guessed from the fact that our scene isn't oriented properly, the next thing we're going to want to add in is we're going to want to go to Utilities and click on Orient Scene. So that's going to be from the camera solver, and it's very important. Um, if you've worked in Blender and you've done nodes, you know how a node setup works. Um, but the most important thing is that you know like the the right order to bring things in. So you want to do the auto track and then the solver, and then you can orient the scene. Um, if you put it in the wrong order, things just won't work properly. So now that we have this orient scene node in, um, there are many different ways of doing this. Um, but the one that I'm going to use is just some of these things like scale and rotate and all that stuff. So I'm going to want to scale up this ground, and I'm going to want to translate this a little bit. So I'm going to want to bring this over here, and I'm going to want to rotate this. And really just what you want to do is you want to make it look like this is sitting on the ground. Um, so this can, kind of can be done um, by eye. Um, it, it's not the most... There, there's really no good way of doing it. Um, the best way is just to kind of figure it out and continue working at it until it looks good. This won't really affect the track, but once we bring it into Blender, um, having things already oriented will make it a lot better. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I'm um, just dragging through this scene real quick. Um, we can see that it looks to be um, sticking pretty good to our ground. Um, so just to check it, we can go over here and we can go into, let's see, where is it? Geometry and test object. 
and that allows us to just select something like a thumbtack and click on add to scene and interaction mode place at selected feature so now we can just select something like that it seems like our scene is upside down let's see if we can fix that orient scene um rotate let's rotate this there we go I don't know how our scene got to be upside down, but somehow it did. Um, if we go back over here to test object, we can select one of these points, and going back through our footage, seems to be like it's placed on the ground. So that is exactly what we want. Um, so now that we have all that, the next thing we're going to want to do is actually export this. So we don't want our test object in there, we just want our scene. So we can right click on this and go to export, and open up the exporting node. So the way that Blender works is that um, we can import in a ton of different formats, but the one that is pretty universal here is going to be the Collada DAE. Um, so just leave the scale and frame offset um, as normal. And here we have a bunch of options of what we want to export. So the most important thing we're going to export is our camera here, um, camera group. We actually don't need all of our trackers. Um, if you want to see like a representation of what our scene looks like inside of Blender with um, each one of these trackers being represented as an empty, you can keep all of those checked, but it's not really necessary. Um, this is the geometry. If you place any test objects and you want to export those, you can. Um, any textures or point clouds, but we're not going to get into that. So the main thing that we want to export is the camera here. So now we can go back over here and select the right um, directory. And I'm just going to label this as... Um, track.da and now that we have all of the right settings there we can click on export scene okay export succeeded and now we can go back into blender okay we are back into blender and i just want to say congratulations the hardest part of the tutorial is over um now that we are done tracking all that we need to do is import um and change a few settings and we will be all ready to start adding things to our scene so i'm going to go up here to file and import and remember we exported it to a collada dae so we're going to click on that and we can import our track.dae um you see that'll bring in both a null and a camera um but as of right now, not everything is correct. So the first thing you'll notice is, um, for some strange reason, when you bring it in, all the keyframes are shifted over by one. Um, we really want to start everything on frame one, um, but Collada DAE formats everything so that it starts at zero. So we're just going to select all of these keyframes and drag them over one. The next thing we're going to want to do is make sure that all of the scene settings are correct. So remember, um, we want to be in 25 frames per second. It will change for your video, that's just what works for me. Then you're also going to want to select um, the right resolution. So 1920 by 1080 is my clip, um, but just make sure that your scene is matched to your video clip. So next we can zero into the camera here, um, and make sure that we have the camera selected, and we can go over here into the camera tab. Um, so you'll notice here the default focal length in Blender, it's, or in for this import was 24.16 millimeters. That's not correct. I don't know why it doesn't bring in the right... Um, focal length, it just doesn't. So we're actually going to want to go back into PF Track and go over to the Camera Solver tab. And you can see here it estimated our focal length is 9.902. I'm actually not going to import that. I'm going to want to import the field of view. I've found a few problems with doing it with focal length that I'm not going to talk about here, but um, field of view has just always been more reliable. So I'm going to remember that is 73.383. So now going back into Blender here, we can select instead of millimeters, field of view, and go 73.383. Cool. That selects everything, um, and that is all the settings we need to change. If you want, or sorry, actually there's one more. Um, if you want to use the entire clip in Blender, you'll notice that, kind of like we did at the beginning, um, we need to set the Blender... Um, scene to the same amount of frames as the video. So you'll see this ends at 1729, um, 1729. Just set that so then it ends at the exact same spot. Um, so now we are fully done. Um, you can see that our camera is moving just as it was in the video. Um, everything seems to be at the right speed if you play it back. Um, this is kind of a slow motion clip, so you'll see that, but scrubbing through everything looks good. If you actually want to make it um, so then you can see the video when you're working. You can go over here into camera and turn on background images and add in a movie clip. Now if you click on open, you can find your movie clip and just like that, as your camera is moving, um, you will see that 
um, the ground sticks with it and you can turn this opacity to 100%. So there we go. Now you can start adding in um, different objects into this scene and you will see that they will be tracked into your scene. Um, so I hope this tutorial helps everyone. Um, if anyone has any questions or comments on what we did here, um, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will try my best to answer um, all of them. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.